You know, uh, have you ever really read a book that was so smooth and flawless, it felt like the words just danced off the page? I don't know. Ever wonder how it got that way? Well, I'm going to tell you today because today's lesson is uh, polishing your manuscript, line and copy editing explained. All right. It's a crucial stage, by the way. You you, you need to copy edit and you need to do some line editing. Um, so why is that important, Thomas? Well, these editing phases are essential for polishing your manuscript, ensuring clarity and coherence, as well as allowing a professional level of presentation uh, to meet publishing standards. Uh, ultimately, no matter how great we are as writers, all great writers have great editors. So what is line editing and copy editing? All right, sometimes these get mixed up. Sometimes they get uh, ignored. Sometimes they... Uh, don't make any sense. Um, line editing focuses on the creative content, writing style, and language uh, use uh, uh, at the sentence and paragraph level. So you might have a sentence that is like, uh, there in the sky, the stars bright and wide, and I saw to myself, you know, and it goes on and on and on. A, a, a line editor might come in and go, you know, we could break this sentence up. Another thing they, they might do is if you have like a, a, a large pro, or a massive passage of verbiage. Uh, they might say, this is slowing down the pacing. However, you can break this up and allow it to kind of be its own thing. Another thing a line editor might do is they'll go through and uh, ultimately they'll tell you uh, the formatting is slightly weird for maybe uh, where you have dialogue and action. And they, uh, the POV switch, they, they, they might check out those things. But we're going to go into that a little deeper. Uh, what is a copy editor? Copy editor uh, ensures correctness, consistency, and completeness, addressing grammatical, spelling, and punctuation, uh, as well as additional formatting issues. Um, so to, to put it into perspective, line editor handles the clarity, uh, the writing style itself, and the language you use. Uh, this might also include, are you using uh, E-Old English or uh, American English? because there are different ways to spell stuff. Sometimes we don't have the consistency in the way we spell certain words. Uh, they might even look at the names. Um, but copy editors are going to double down on that. They're going to make sure you spell all the names right, uh, all the references right. They're going to make sure your spelling in general is correct. Uh, they're going to work on your grammatical. Which gr Grammar is a lot different than uh, line editing, though. Grammar is different than like going, let's cut this sentence up. Grammar is just, is the grammar correct in that sense? All right, so before, I'm actually going to give a walkthrough presentation on how to approach line editing and copy editing. But before we do that, I'm going to give uh, four tips and tri uh, tricks, as I always do. <clears throat> so you could think about these things uh, while we approach it. So uh, number one, approaching uh, line editing. You know, the short of it, focus on refining each sentence for maximum impact and clarity. Look for ways to vary sentence structure to maintain a rhythmic flow. Jazz it up. Jazz it up. Remove unnecessary words and phrases that bog down the narrative. Ensure each paragraph and, sing, and scene. I'll reread that. Ensure each paragraph and scene transition smoothly into the next. Okay. <clears throat> Some things you have to understand about this. Uh, that's why we're going to go into the long of it is, uh, by the way, this you can do these edits. Uh, I, I it is recommended that you hire an editor, but you can do these edits. But the difference is a line editor is going to look at it in a different way. Uh, us writers have a biased connection that's an emotional truth to uh, the piece, and uh, we might become uh, swayed to keep a line that might not be working because we wrote it. All right. Uh, I have worked with clients where I'm like, hey, you should break this up or, uh, you know, this this is not through anyone's specific POV or and, you know, they oh, you don't think I'm a good writer. No, I didn't say the, the words you chose are amazing and the descriptions are great. And, uh, you know, all that. It's just uh, we need some clarity. Oh, I, okay. and you're like, <laughs> it's, it's there is no such thing as first time done and one. Like all creative elements take time from drawing to writing to even music. There are songs that I played in my career uh, 
so many times. Okay? I didn't have to think about them anymore. But that doesn't mean there weren't times where I didn't play it perfect, or I messed up, or I just didn't care. <laughs> right? Uh, but if someone said, you need to change that song when I was younger, I'd be like, this song is perfect. But it's not. Songs are allowed to evolve. My, when I was writing music, music became more interesting once I allowed it to evolve beyond uh, the original creation. And that's the thing about being a creative. We have to maintain our vision, our direction, our style. But that doesn't mean it should be as is. Uh, we should allow for creative uh, alterations and adjustments because there is a certain point where refining is, you know, you're overdoing it, you know, come on, 30, 30 drafts simmer down now. Uh, however, uh, it, it, it's just, again, if a line editor comes in, they're not changing your work. They're suggesting ideas. And then it's your job as the writer to agree or disagree. And that's the beauty of it is you don't have <clears throat> just because they say, this line would be better or or more interesting this way or you know you should try it this way it doesn't mean you have to do it that way but anyway so let's talk about the long of it when it comes up to approaching line editing especially if you're approaching it yourself and again as you focus on improving sentence structure to make the prose uh more dynamic engaging uh, this would include shortening overly long sentences eliminating passive constructions where active voice would be more effective and breaking up monotonous sentence patterns. Additionally, not all sentences have to be active. It's just active is a little bit more interesting, but sometimes passive, passive sentences will emphasize something. So that's okay too. All right. And that's, that's also a good thing for a line editor. They look at it, they can tell they have a better idea if passive is working in that situation. The other thing is you, you're, you're looking at it to choose words that accurately convey the intended meaning and emotion. Uh, this is uh, where you might even replace vague or overused words with more precise and evocative terms to strengthen the narrative's impact. Uh, I would also add to that, you know, what time period are you writing in? Even if it's fantasy, uh, there is a style of dialogue that uh, allows for immersion. You know, if you're writing epic fantasy and there's dragons, knights, kings, queens, jazars, uh, whatever, uh, and they're like, yo, bro, that's wild. That's wicked wild, man. Wicked wild. Time to tend to choose your words wisely. The other thing is, you know, a line editor should be looking at the pacing and pacing again is the amount of the speed the, blah, 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 pacing is the speed at which information is presented to the reader. Right. So this is where you would identify and eliminate redundant phrases and repetitive information that can slow down the narrative pace. Uh, this helps to keep the movies, you know, the, the movie, the story flowing and uh, maintains the reader's interest overall. But how however, uh, this also Sometimes a, pa a paragraph, like a huge passage, might benefit from being broken into two passages. Um, and also more doesn't, more sometimes means less. And what that means is if you take one thing and break it up into more beats, uh, it means it, it, it moves quicker. I know that sounds weird, but it's pace slows when you're in a moment longer. Pace speeds up when you move through that moment quicker. Uh, and that's why sometimes fights can be as quick as he lunged forward, blocking uh, Jacob, jumped to the ground. Well, Melissa fl flipped over him, getting behind. Like, that's quick pacing. Uh, in fact, you know, uh, he lunged forward, striking at Chris. Uh, and then the next paragraph, Jacob uh, flipped over him. You know, Melissa it becomes a third passage. Those are three different passages, uh, three quick acts. Uh, actions, boom, boom, boom. You're flying through it. The pace is quicker. But I could get Jacob lunged in uh, as his swords connected. Uh, the pressure increased on him. He heard the battle behind. Now we're in that moment and the pacing slows down. So sometimes, uh, but I could still take that and go, you know, Jacob lunged in, connecting swords with his rival. That could be a passage. Now I can make a second passage and it goes, uh, he zoomed in 
to the moment, feeling the, uh, the pressure taking over his muscles as they shivered uh, against the pushback of his arch nemesis, the battle rage behind. And then now another paragraph, a battle rage. So now I made three paragraphs, right? And that actually helps keep the pacing going. Well, also going deeper into the moment. All right. Anyway, the other thing is you want to evaluate each scene and paragraph for its contribution to the overall story. Ultimately, this is where you're going to cut or condense scenes that do not advance the plot or develop character. Focus on keeping the narrative tight and compelling. I would also suggest that if anything is description for description's sake, I'd probably remove it. Or I would add uh, a POV of a character experiencing that description. However, every line should have one or more of these three elements, uh, plot, character development, or uh, world building. Now, how can you do that? Well, believe it or not, if you if it goes, uh, uh, you know, the walls the walls were tight tight enough uh, for one one you know the walls were the walls closed in tight enough to secure one man, let alone the group as as uh, they trickled in. Thomas maintained uh, vigilance, uh, leading them through the tight space. Now that means that whole thing is character development because it's through thomas's perspective or pov that means thomas because he is acknowledged as the pov even though his name isn't at the beginning he is in that that pro uh he is the one noticing this is something he noticed as a character that the walls are too tight for even a single man however he understands that his people are struggling to get through it so his vigilance keeps guiding them all right so uh, you know, sometimes you could cut out things if they're not through a POV and it's just, I want to describe the castle, <laughs> you know, like, but who's, who's noticing the castle, you know, like, why are they looking at the castle? Why is it important? Well, I want to use these pretty words and I have a really great way of describing the castle. All right. Is the castle that important? Yeah. Well, uh, what are you describing that helps elevate the plot? Well, I, I, I just want them to see how nice it is. Okay. But. Is there something about the description that will come up later? Are you seeding something? Are you foreshadowing something in the description? See, now the description could have value because if it's description with foreshadowing or description that's seeding something very important, all right? Uh, if it's a description of how the, how the wall is built out, how like some of the bricks are uneven or pushed out, creating a, you know, a texture that might seem like nothing at first, but then later on, how did they get up the tower? They use the bricks and they climb up the tower and it, it makes it easier for them. I'm just saying th when you write all elements need to have a purpose. And if they don't, this is where line editing comes in and we either add the purpose or we, uh, take out. All right. Number two timing for copy editing. The short of it, you know, save copy editing for the final stage of revisions to focus on catching all the surface errors after major structural and content changes are complete. Pay close attention to technical accuracy, such as grammar and punctuation, and ensure consistency in style and formatting. I will also add that I have uh, known other authors and writers, uh, as well as clients, um, that have paid for uh copy editing like on a first draft and a second draft and a third draft and a fourth draft. they keep paying for it every draft and I, I and the first thing i say is save the money wait to the end because you're going to keep editing stuff <laughs> when you when you know you when you get to a point where you're like this is the book that's when you pay for the copy anyway so what's the long of it? So, you know, you got to treat the copy editing as literally the final step in the process. All right. It should be performed only after all substantial content changes and line edits have been made. This ensures that you are polishing the final version of the manuscript. 
Uh, you also want to work systematically from the beginning to the end of the manuscript, checking for consistency and correctness in small sections to avoid missing errors. So instead of just reading the book, take a moment, take, you know, take each passage and look at that passage with focus. All right. The other thing is your, your, your whole, your whole purpose to this step is attention to detail, right? So that's why you have to thoroughly check that grammar, uh, uh, for errors and in any incorrect syntax or improper punctuation and stuff like that. Um, and this, this helps with for, uh, making sure the format is also consistent throughout the document. This is including font usage or paragraph spacing and headlining. Uh, the heading styles are also crucial. Um, <clears throat> but additionally, are, you, are they indenting in the proper way? Are they not indenting in the proper way? Because, you know, when you start off a chapter, you don't indent, right? When you chop out chop off when you start off a section after a hard or soft chapter break you don't indent um <clears throat> but additionally is the soft chapter is it technically a soft chapter break or a hard chapter break depending on the way you see the narrative because remember a soft cha chapter break typically uh maintains a narrative push uh but is a short cut in time or uh or we're just kind of jumping past something whereas a hard chapter break can be a new POV. It's a new uh, narrative thread. Um, so that's important to understand. Uh, yeah, there you go. All right, number three, hiring professional editors. Now, the short of it, at the end, consider hiring professionals for unbiased, skilled attempt uh, at uh, editing your manuscript. So again, consider hiring professionals for unbiased, skilled attention to your manuscript. An expert line editor can enhance your prose, style, and flow. While a copy editor ensures technical precision, uh, they evaluate the benefits. Uh, what you should do is evaluate the benefits of uh, professional editing against the costs, particularly if you aim for traditional publishing or want to ensure a polished, self-published work. Now, the short of it, the benefits are obviously there. You know, a professional editor is what they do, and especially if they have the, the uh, experience, you know, and they bring an objective perspective to your work, identifying issues that you might have overlooked. They are not emotionally connected to your work. You are. And they are looking at it with an objective perspective. They are looking for clarity they are looking for grammar they are you know they're not looking them you know to be like well this is going to be the line that wins you a pull up pulitzer you know uh and then you're like that's the best line in the book you know <laughs> but again if they say changes you don't have to but they are suggesting it their expertise can elevate the quality of your writing to ensure that it meets industry standards the other thing is that line editors specialize in enhancing the style and readability of prose. Uh, well, copy editors focus on grammatical and factual accuracy, each bringing a focused skill uh, to refine different aspects of your manuscript, uh, which also brings us to the cost versus benefit element of it. You know, while hiring professional editors can be costly, consider it an investment in your career as an author. Because a well-edited manuscript is more likely to succeed in a competitive market. If you aim for traditional publishing, professional editing can make your manuscript stand out. For self-publishing, it can significantly improve reader satisfaction and reviews, especially if they read it. You know, there's a difference between like one or two misspelled words. But if the book uh, grammar is all wonky and nothing is, co you know, you see a character name seven different ways, you know. They might not buy your next book. And uh, finally, final tip, uh, the importance of editing. The short of it, even if your prose feel perfect to you, fresh expert eyes can catch errors and provide insights that dramatically improve your manuscript's professionalism and readability, which brings us to the long of it. Authors are often too close to their own work to see those flaws. What flaws? I only see ceilings. You're not looking down. That's, I refuse to see the errors. Professional editing helps bridge the gap between the author's intentions and the reader's perceptions. Okay, now what that means is how the reader foresees the information, or I should say how the reader sees the information. Uh, author's intentions, we already know what should be on the page because we know what it should be saying in our head, and we're in that world where it's like, this is the story, and 
you know, but a reader doesn't know what you know. They do not have the emotional connection to your uh, to the plot, to the characters, to your uh, time spent, and there will be time spent on it. But professional editors ensure that your work adheres to high standards of publishing, increasing its chances for success. All right. If you haven't done so already, remember, uh, please uh, hit the uh, subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss out. Also, if you notice, looking down below the video, uh, there's some uh, merchandise uh, that's available. You know, uh, you have a characters, uh, characters made me do it. Uh, all great writing is rewriting, uh, et cetera, et cetera. All right, let's go through the what through original passage before editing. <clears throat> let's do this. Boop. All right. <clears throat> let's read it together. Now, obviously, before we read it, you can see that my program is already catching misspelled words and potentially uh, incorrect things. So we're, we're let's just read it first. So the sun peaked, hmm? peaked through the curtains, casting a warm glow across the room. Sarah stirred uh, from her slumber. Uh, her eyes fluttering open. She laid in bed for a few moments, gathering her thoughts. The aroma of freshly brewed coffee waft <laughs> into the bedroom, enticing her to start her day. She stretched her arms above her head and yawned before finally climbing out of bed. Sarah shuffled to the kitchen, eager to pour herself a cup of the fragmented brew as she savored the warm liquid. She contemplated the day's tasks ahead of her. Now, right off the bat, I'm already seeing stuff that I need to fix. But now that we know what it looks like, boop, 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 line editing the passage. All right. Couple things uh, we got to do here, you know. Uh, first and foremost, uh, you know, actually, I'll, I'll leave. I'll leave the. I'll leave that for last. Um. Let's do, let's do this. Let's do copy editing first. No, no, wait. That's supposed to be last, remember? See, I almost made the mistake. You see what I did? I just want to rush through it and get it. I want to show you. What, okay, anyway. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do, by the way, is uh, if we look at it just just as as uh, as one long pro, okay? Uh, the sun peeked through the sky. Sarah stirred. And, and, and she laid in bed a few moments. So it's the aroma of freshly brewed coffee enticed her to start her day. And then I would do this. Boom. And the reason is because this changes the movement. She stretched her arms above her head. And you know, this is her doing the act of getting up. So this is, if, if you look at a passage like a scene, set up conflict and uh, resolve, this is setting up what's going on. This is the conflict. All right. Slumbering eyes. She fluttered open. You know, she's, she's just like, oh, I just need. I just need to slay in bed a little bit. And then it's resolved because it moves the narrative forward and the passage. Oh, look at that. The aroma of freshly brewed coffee waft into the bedroom, enticing her to start a day. I might almost I might almost do this, actually. I'll be honest. All right. However, the and the will have to be uh, eradicated as well. But these are two uh two different things. Because the that's what you're looking for, is like, does it change the movement? And then I might even say she stretched her arms before climbing out of bed. And then this I would boop. Uh, Sarah shuffled to the kitchen, engaged, uh, eager to pour herself in. Uh, she uh, shoved the warm liquid. She contemplated the days. I would almost do this. You get to pour herself a cup of coffee. <clears throat> However, I, I could probably get away with that. As she shows. Hey, same the warm no, no, that's a different movement. All right, so let's go. So let's look at uh, the sun peaked. Well, the sun itself wouldn't do it, but the sunlight would make more sense. So uh, I could actually get rid of the, right? I already know that this is supposed to be E-E-K, but uh, sunlight, we're going to leave that because that's copy editing. So sunlight, so we we uh, we fixed the flow of that. So the sun peaked, we turned it in sunlight, peaked through the curtains, all right? Uh, let's see. She laid in bed for a few moments. Um, you know, uh, she laid in bed gathering her thoughts. We got rid of that because for a few minutes, you know, we want to tighten up the sentence. So uh, she laid in bed gathering her thoughts. Very tight, right? Um, let's see. 
let's see. Uh, I could. Uh, this is the other thing we could do, right? So. Let's see. Um, uh, let's see. So peak curtains, her eyes, she laid in bed. Uh, she laid in bed gathering her thoughts. Uh, she laid in bed gathering thoughts. Now, again, I could bring this up there. And we can make it one fluid movement. So I go as the as the aroma freshly brewed coffee wafted through, the, right, and then uh, uh, into the bedroom. Okay, but now, now, now it makes it enticing her to start her day. Okay, she stretched her arms. Never do that. She laid in bed gathering. Okay, there we go. Um, but again, maybe I could do this. And now it's one long movement. Enticing her to start her day. Uh, enticing her to start her day. I would say stretching. Stretching her arms. Let's let's keep it misspelled because uh, we want to do line editing. Stretching her arms above her head. Uh, uh, stretching her arms above her head, and yawning. Yeah, this will be yawning. Yawning before finally climbing out of before climbing out of bed. Boom, bang. Okay. Uh, and then uh, let's see, let's see. Uh, oh, so this sentence right here, enticing her to start her day, stretching her arms above her head and yawning before finally climbing. We don't really need, first of all, this is an L-Y word, and it just doesn't add anything. Enticing her to start the day, stretching her arms above her head and yawning before climbing out of bed, right? So as an example, though, you know, this is clearly a, a first draft, but uh, just just to kind of work through it, and then uh... da -da 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 -da. there you go, there you go. Boo 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 boo. I would say uh, eager. Pour yourself a cup of coffee. Uh, I would say savoring the warm wick liquid. Uh, she contemplated the days, days ten. I oh, yeah, have days tasks ahead, and then we don't need of her. So Sarah shuffled to the kitchen and engaged, engage, eager. Blah, blah, blah. Eager, see dyslexia. Eager to pour a cup of fragmented brew, savoring the warm liquid. She contemplated the days. Okay. Um. This there needs to be a connector here, but uh, self a cup. Uh, eager to pour. So. Uh, favorite mug. Uh, oh. Waiting for her on the counter. All right. Uh, and then savoring. Uh, mm, uh, she grabs her favorite mug already. She grabs her favorite mug already waiting for her on the counter. She's already waiting for her on the counter. Uh, and then uh, pouring. Pouring, pouring. <laughs> See, I caught that. Pouring, magic. Uh, pouring her morning ritual. Pouring. Uh, okay. She grabbed her favorite mug already, waiting for her on the counter. Now I would probably choose an, and poured her morning ritual. That's that's probably. 
I think that makes sense. Uh, because why not? That's what we always say. Why not? I don't know. All right. So there we go. We, uh, we adjusted a few things. The only thing I probably would change here is, uh, she grabbed her favorite mug. Maybe there's a comma there already waiting. Uh, she grabbed her favorite mug already waiting for on the counter. Um, I don't know, maybe, all right, she grabbed her favorite mug, already waiting for her on the counter, uh, counter, and poured, is there a comma there, counter, right, I think there's a, I think there would be a, is there, I think we could get, I think we could do an Oxford comma that, can't we, uh, counter, I think we could Oxford counter that, comma that, all right, anyway, Okay, so there you go. Now let's do copy editing. Ba -da 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 -da. The first thing we do is peaked. Oh, God. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm going to do, do one of the last ones that I know is wrong. Um, just so you... Uh, it's, it's one that we sometimes miss. Uh, stretch needs to be stretching. Obviously, the computer helped me with that. Uh, let's see. Yo! all right and then um let's see let's see oh okay she lay in bed lay is uh past tense just so you know uh not so much because right? the act of laying is to lay okay just think of it like that um what else uh, oh, and earlier I already uh, did the uh, apostrophe to uh, enticing her. It's not, I think I got rid of it, though. I changed it. Yeah, I did. All right. <clears throat> so there we go. We uh, we cleaned it up. We added some. Uh, we we fixed up the pacing a little bit. Right, and then uh, you know. But as you could see, the copy editing focused. Uh, was more on the grammar, you know, on the spelling. It was more like spelling, grammar. Grammar was the lay to lay, laying to lay, peak to peak, uh, stretching to actually being spelled correctly. Uh, you know, um, that's the important things, you know. And in the copy edited version, we corrected spelling, fixed some verb tense, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. With the line editing, however, you know, it was more, it was more concerned. Uh, you know, we were trying to fix the flow, like the sunlight peak through. No, just let's make it quick and right to the point. Sunlight peeked through the curtains, casting a warm glow across the room. Sarah stirred from her slumber, her eyes fluttering open. She lay in bed, gathering her thoughts as the aroma of freshly brewed coffee wafted into the bedroom, enticing her to start her day, stretching her arms above her head and yawning before climbing out of bed. Sarah shuffled to the kitchen, eager to pour herself a cup of the fragrant brew. She grabbed her favorite mug, already waiting for her on the counter, and poured her morning ritual. Savoring the warm liquid, she contemplated the tasks, days, uh, the day's tasks ahead. Okay, so we helped with uh, making that a little smoother, uh, but also the structure and stuff like that. Uh, we also uh, made it a little bit more concise in some areas. We expanded on, uh, we connected the dots because remember, in a passage you want to connect the dots. Like you don't, you don't want them to feel like statements. Like Sarah woke, uh, woke up in bed. She got up and walked through the door. Uh, her feet. Oh, wait, wait, wait. <clears throat> uh, she got up and walked through the door. And she entered. Oh, wait. Her, her desire entered the kitchen before her, eh, before she did, before she did. Uh, and there in the blue. 80s style kitchen of her parents she drank her coffee like this this is like statements she woke up in bed she got up and walked through the door her desire entered the kitchen right <clears throat> ultimately right off the bat if you do this for line editing just so you know you look at the movement so she woke up in bed she got up and walked through the door i would turn that into a beat 
Um, he, uh, her desire was in it, and uh, and there in the blue. And so, so now what I would do is I would, uh, well, how is she waking up in bed? Right, that's what I would start asking myself. How did she wake up in bed? How does the bed feel? What kind of sensory elements can I add to this? Uh, is the sun peeking through the window? And that would be that passage. But you would let it. Every sentence would lead to it. Uh, even if I started with Sarah woke him up in bed. The light, uh, the light of morning, uh, nudged at her drown. Drowsiness, right? That's probably spelled wrong. I don't know. All right. Sarah woke up in bed. The light, the light of morning nudged at her drowsiness. She curled, she curled over, pulling the blanket tighter, uh, tighter to her chest. Um, her legs cur, um, uh, her legs, uh, her legs up, shrinking her into a smaller ball. Uh, right. So there we go. So Sarah woke up in bed the light morning, uh, nudged at her drowsiness. She curled over, pulling the blanket tighter to her chest. Her legs, uh, actually, she curled over, grasping. The blanket tighter to her chest, her legs pulled up, shrinking her into a smaller ball, right? So now we described, and now the line editing works out better. We created a, a better pacing, and it's not just statements. And if a passage is just feels like statements, like it's like this happens, this happens, this happens, this happens, then it means to kind of work on it because you want it to move. Even if I change this to more singular, Sarah woke up. Right? I could do this. You know, the light of the morning nudged at her drowsiness. Uh, as she curled over, uh, curled over, grasping the blanket tighter to her chest, her leg, uh, her legs pulled up, uh, by uh, her legs pulled up, pulled up. Oh, this I and this I would probably keep. Uh, okay. Anyway. So then I would do that with each each sentence. I would turn these into beats and moments. You know, she got up and walked through the door. Well, we got to wake her up, though. You know, shrinking her into a smaller ball. Like, now we know she doesn't want to get up, so now we got to get her up. And that, that's sort of what line editing really does. It makes you look at passages and make sure. That was one of the things we did. We connected it. You know, she grabbed her favorite mug already on the counter and pulled it in. Right? You have to connect the beats and moments within a passage. Uh, so it doesn't feel like it's just sour shuffle to the kitchen, eager to pour herself a cup of fragmented brew, uh, sa and then savoring. Like, if it jumps right to her savoring the liquid, we're not showing the process. Not that uh, you have to show every little element, but if I didn't add this, then this sentence would end up being its own passage because it becomes a new movement. But we moved her through the moment, and therefore we can... Uh, allow the pacing to slow down a little bit in this passage because it's going through Sarah. Anyway. All right. That was exciting. I had a lot of fun with that. Okay, question. What part of editing do you find most challenging and why? Let me know in the comments below. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss out. And, of course, merchandise. Uh, space ball t shirts. All right, um, final thoughts line editing and copy editing are not mere formalities, they are a crucial step in the refinement of your manuscript. Manuscript, they go beyond the basic proofreading to deeply engage with the text, enhancing clarity, style, and overall readability. This detailed scrutiny ensures that your narrative flows smoothly and your prose resonates with precision and polish. Through line editing, you enhance the narrative's impact by refining sentence structure, word choice, and pacing. This meticulous process ensures that each sentence not only reads well, but also contributes effectively to conveying of the stories, emotions, and themes. It's about making your prose not just clear, but compelling and evocative. 
Copy editing, however, is your safety net against the small errors that can distract readers and detract from your story's credibility. By correcting grammatically mistakes, or I should say, by correcting grammatical mistakes, ensuring stylistic consistencies, and verifying uh, that, uh, you know, hey, are the facts facts, you know? Am I, uh, am I using the right words, the right terms? You know, that's part of copy editing as well. Uh, copy editing also helps present your work in the most professional light possible because it's cleaned up. This attention to detail is what differentiates a polished manuscript from a rough draft. Now, while integrating feedback and uh, making edits, it's vital to balance your unique voice and style with the clarity and accessibility needed to reach a broader audience. Effective editing respects the author's voice while making the text appealing and understandable to readers. Investing time and possibly uh, financial resources into thorough editing reflects a commitment to your craft and career as an author. Whether you choose to hire professional editors or meticulously edit yourself, prioritizing this phase of revisions demonstrates a dedication to producing quality work that respects your readers and satisfies publishing standards if that is in if that is indeed the direction you're looking to go and remember writing is inherently uh integrative you know it's um it's a part it's a process right so you know no draft is going to be perfect on the first attempt and each round of edits is an opportunity to see your work anew to refine and rethink so you want to embrace this process as a, na as a natural and essential part of developing a robust, engaging narrative. Your first, your first draft is not a last draft. It's the throw it up and get it out on the page draft. Then you do a second draft. Then you get some alpha readers to make sure it all makes sense. Then you edit that uh, their notes into the third draft. Uh, then you send the third draft to some beta readers and they give you their experience on the reading. And then based on their notes for clarity and other things, you do another edit. And then once you feel happy with that, you send it off to this step and you get some uh, line editing and copy editing. All right. Anyway, the other thing that you should be doing, uh, you know, in the, in the last bit of final thoughts is learn and grow in your editing skills. You know, each manuscript is a chance to improve, to apply new techniques and to refine your approach to both storytelling and the editing. The more you edit, the more intuitive these practices will become, enhancing your efficiency and effectiveness as a writer. Next video in the series will be uh, the final video for a, a while. Uh, but it will show a new process of writing novels in one video. So there's a few adjustments I made uh, over the course of these uh, 13 videos. Um, it's uh, I refined my process uh, as one should, uh, because when I first wrote this list out, uh, the first video that went out was like two years ago. Uh, so over the course of two years, like all writers, we should be evolving and assimilating new ideas and concepts into what makes it better. Uh, I had always been writing a certain way. I change it and then I change it again. And then when I started this channel that at the time, these 13 steps were my ideal process uh, for it. But uh, over the time of doing it, I've uh, learned some other things that uh, I was like, let me put that into the system. Anyway. So that video will be one video. I will not go over each technique. I will just explain that I have these techniques and then give a little something, something about it, a little description, okay? So that should be fun. Anyway, uh, look, as always, peace and harmony, truth and action, and keep developing the right mindset. I'll see you next time. Bye. Love you.